to the Omni Dog and Omni Cat comic book review show special spooky edition. Ooh. Right for the Halloween time. So spooky. Yeah. Uh, I am Omni Dog, joined as always by Omni Cat, aka Kristen. How are you? You know, I'm okay. I got off work at 7 a.m. this morning. <laughs> oh, so, you know, I got some sleep, but um, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot. It's been all week, overnights. But do I'm you, off. Do, you, do they work everybody like that, or do they take advantage of you because of your youth? Um, yeah, so I end up having to pretty much cover for everyone when they take vacation and sick time and stuff. So. Th that's because yeah. you're younger and most recently hired type thing? Uh, well, I'm actually the boss, so they're oh. like, yeah, so they're like, oh, you get to do all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't really make sense to me, but okay. <laughs> so that's why, because they're like, oh. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay, I didn't pick up on that. Yeah, I'm a supervisor, um, and I have to cover for everyone. It doesn't, it, it shouldn't be that way, right? I'm like, wait, wait, I got a promotion, and, and this is what I have to do, but that's how it is. <laughs> so, sad day. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm glad you're here, that you got some sleep. I, I always appreciate the fact that you uh, can work us in on a weekend, because I know it can be hard for you. Definitely. I'm happy to just not be at work right now. So <laughs> that's all I want. I'm, I'm away from the news. It's good. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we are. I had a lot of fun with the books we read, even though I called basket full of heads, bucket full of heads. <laughs> Felix was, <laughs> fortunately, Felix, Felix corrected me. Um, so I, I just corrected that in the title. Um, so I can, we can get right into the books or we can, actually, I know what I'd like to do. Um, the book behind you. Oh, yeah, I just grabbed it. So it's now oh, the book that's in, in your lap. Yeah. <laughs> we your husband's latest book and we re we we reviewed it on Omni Bros and I like this book Rock and Roll Terrorist. It's about Gigi Allen who um just didn't care, <laughs> right? I mean the oh, what yeah. book, he didn't care about anything. I I I don't say that admirably, but I will say that this is the only, uh, what I got from the book was that he, he had a concept of what rock and roll needed to be, and he was gonna stick to that no matter what. And um, he, uh, I mean, he absolutely didn't care about what anybody thought at all he was going to do things his way. And I don't know anybody else like that. Everybody else, you know, maybe has a little compromise in them about some things, but this guy was just all out himself all the time. Um, he did some, he did some heinous things. Um, I, I've listened to some of his music. Um, I think I like the comic book better than his music. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, this is Reed's book, and I think it's uh, a really good look at who this guy is. Was uh, I, I, I guess he OD'd in 1993, but I remember in the punk scene when I was the when I was the um, the kind of button down shirt kind of outside observer, listening to the music and but not getting into the mosh pit type of guy. I knew about him, and I think that. Reed did a really good job writing and illustrating this book. Yeah, and what I love, like anyone who actually is aware of who he is, Reed does a good job of like, like this is the beginning where Reed is kind of addressing the camera and he's talking to the audience and the reader. Um, so they know that like, he's not saying anything this guy did is okay and he's not trying to glorify anything he's done. Right. Uh, and, he, and he comes back at the end and kind of goes over it too, which I thought that was really well done. It's not just someone... You know, because anyone could write a story about this guy and be like, he was crazy, but great or whatever. There's probably a lot of people who think that. Um, but yeah, that's not what he's doing here. And I thought it was really well done. I didn't know anything about this guy before he started working on this book. And he would just tell me all these stories. I'm like, this is this guy's crazy, <laughs> like legit 
nuts. Like, yeah. like probably had some undiagnosed mental illnesses for sure. Like there's mm-hmm. something happening there. Um, but yeah, there were these crazy moments in this, like there's a Johnny cash, like a moment that I didn't expect, which was just so bizarre, but fascinating. Mm-hmm. And there's a John Wayne Gacy connection. So I think this is also great for anyone who's interested in true crime and like warped people <laughs> and fascinating, but ma- terrible humans, you know? Yeah. It's a good uh, study of this crazy rocker guy. And if you'll see right here, Iggy Pop totally read it and loved it. And Iggy there's quite Pop did the, he read it and loved it. How did he, yeah. how did he get Iggy, the book to Iggy Pop and get him to read it? Well, I believe he reached out to his publicist and was like, hey, are you interested in reading this book? And he never thought he'd hear back because, uh-huh. you know, it's Iggy Pop, but yeah. he heard back and, you know, the publicist was like, send it on. He wants to read it. And he did. And then he sent back this quote, which I will read to you. Reed Chancellor brings a real America story to your eyeballs when you can't put down. The key is the affection and respect he gives his subject. That is Iggy Pop right on the front. Um, also, Box Brown, who did Andre the Giant, um, Tetris is this guy for real, some really great uh, first second books. He blurbed it too. He liked it. So he's on the back. And so is Durf Back Durf, who did My Friend Dahmer, which I yeah. loved. Right. So Durf also read it and loved it and gave him a nice quote. So a lot of people, a lot of great people read it, loved it. And guys, it's so soft. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know I like the texture of books, and it's a very nice quality book. Very soft. So you can um, get this right now at Microcosm Publishing. Check it out online. Get them right from the publisher, and it's not it's not an expensive book. And there's also a coloring book, oh, an activity I book, <laughs> that goes with it that you can get, uh, which is also cool because you kind of get more of the story. And you get, like, pages from the book that you can, like, color. And there's little, like, quotes and stuff to go with it. And there are little activity pages. Some things I can't show, so I'm trying to (laughs) flip past all those. (laughs) It's not for the faint of heart. Um, Let's see. There's some cool stuff here. Where's that activity? There's, like, some activity pages thrown in. Oh, yeah, I love this one, too. Which was the whole whole cover (laughs) there is great. Um, there's like a fill in the blank. There it is. You can make your own GG story. There's an activity. <laughs> there's probably nothing too outrageous to put in there that's not actually true. Yeah. And it's like, it's a nice wide coloring book. So you can also get that if you're interested. But, but yeah, this is where it's at. Check it out. I'm not just saying that. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I'll tell yeah, them. I'll tell I, them if they don't. <laughs> I totally enjoyed it. And I, uh, of course read of course uh there's a page for toilet paper (laughs) Uh, i didn't know that that's hilarious (laughs) yeah because going to a Gigi show uh you didn't want to get too close to the stage no he was yeah he had some poop situations yeah no (laughs) not good uh, good oh here we go do not use this page tear it out and use it for toilet paper Which just perfectly goes well with him. So beautiful. That's good, that's yeah. that's, actually, that's pretty clever. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I, I dug that book a lot. So I encourage all the viewers to to uh, check it out. It's good. Along with Hardcore Anxiety. Yeah. Another book. One of his other books. It's right here. What a nice cover. You could also get from Microcosm Publishing. This turned into an infomercial, but... um. <laughs> we just we just both like this book. So. I think it's awesome that uh, he got to do that, and it's um, God, Iggy Pop. It's amazing. It still does not compute in my head. I'm like, what do you mean? He like it's on the cover. It's so crazy. Yeah, but, yeah. He's that's, into it. That's a great name for it too. Rock and roll terrorist. Yeah, that's a good solid name. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see, uh, another thing I meant to ask you before we got on the air, um, so why not on the air? (laughs) Maybe, maybe I should text it to you. Do you, um, I'll let you tell me when you want me to start plugging your channel. Oh, okay. Anytime. Okay. Yeah. I mean, 
it hasn't seen action in a few weeks, but that's because of my work schedules. But uh, yeah, we could we could do it anytime. It's called the Comic Slayer. Uh, Reed and I have two videos up over there. Um, oh, okay. We're, we're going to put more up. So yeah, if you want to check it out, we'll we'll keep doing stuff. Okay, because uh, I didn't, I wasn't sure if you felt it was ready to be to go. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. The Comic yeah. Slayer. Now here's a question. Would you rather be the comic slayer here, or are you okay with Omnicat? I mean, I'm okay with Omnicat. People have different names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, very... like I told you, I could have made it Omnicat's vault. I could have. <laughs> that would have been a hilarious thing. <laughs> Which too. I thought was so funny, but I was like, ah, do I want to rip him off, like, blatantly? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I think that is hilarious when you told me that, <laughs> Omnicat's vault. Um, so, okay, so you've got that going for you, and um, we have some books to review that we chose a while ago because the, um, these are horror, horror books that, um, because of the month that we're in, and um, I, uh, I have one, two, three, and five of Ice Cream Man. I had to <laughs> hoopla because I just found out when I went to grab them, I had to hoopla number four. And I realized anything with image that has more than one trade, I should never buy the trade. I should always no. hoopla them because oh, I, guarantee, I guarantee Ice Cream Man, which is so beautifully drawn and so greatly written, this thing's coming out with a really nice hardcover, and I, I should never have, I should never have bought these. As much as I love them, I'm stuck with them now because I can't, um, you know, justify the upgrade. Um, yeah, I truly refuse to buy image trades at this point in my life because I'm like, I can read them all in Hoopla, and then if they get a deluxe and I love it enough, that's what I'm buying, you know. Yeah. Um, I got to do that. I got to yeah. start doing that. You could save some money for sure. Yeah. Well, and I, I should be doing that with Marvel Unlimited too. I have them yeah. both. So I, I, I need to do that too. Um, so why don't we start with Ice Cream Man, which um, I had heard about from Riley, I think. Two years ago? One... 2019 when was it when since i'm a he he reads everything in singles starting out 2018 yeah that and that was for this book the first volume so maybe it started out in singles in 2017 um but it is an um kind of an anthology uh it's written by the same guy and drawn by the same person, W. Maxwell Prince, whom I'd never heard of before, and Martin Morazzo, whose style is like uh, Frank Quitely, I think. Um, uh, but I think it's a little smaller in scale, and I think people might even like it better than Frank Quitely's. Um, I don't know. What did you think of the art? Yeah, uh, I thought it fit the story really well, because uh, the story is so weird. It's like you said, that it's, it is an anthology story, um, pretty much. They're, the one guy who's in the whole thing is the ice cream man, uh, and he's creepy and throughout the whole thing. I I thought the art worked really well, especially the experimental stuff they did. Like, yeah. There's a story of the ice cream man telling these children's stories to like these kids. So he's like pulling these books off, which are similar to what we know but they're not and they're creepy. <laughs> like, and I thought they were funny. And that was really cool and unique. Uh, so yeah, the art was like crude when it needed to be, but then it could also like do the children's thing and like mimic that really well. Yeah. So I think it worked really well with the story. Um, I will say like, because it is an anthology, there are certain issues I liked more than other issues, certain stories. I have a question though. Is it still ongoing? Like, is there more coming? Do we know? I should I should have looked it up. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't didn't say anything about this being the final issue. I can see this going for a while because he inserted in there in the middle the or origination of Ice Cream Man and his uh, uh, 
cousin. Yeah, cousin, yeah. And yeah, that's what I wondered, because I was like, that never came back. So I got to the end, and I'm like, this isn't the end, right? Because it's like there are these like little anthology stories, and then that bigger arc kind of happened. And it was like, w- is this coming back? Like, what's happening with this? So that yeah. was kind of interesting, and I'll be curious when that comes up again. Um, yeah, you definitely have to read these in order, one through five so far, because w- while each story can be read individually, there is some tie-in overall that goes in through it and um i i felt like um the that that was left sort of um unanswered as you say it it was just inserted in there that that the two beings came uh about um and and they they came to the new universe uh our universe and um what what's going on with that now because then we we see um ice cream man still but it it looks like he got his cousin sort of i don't know we don't really yeah i just got more questions from that right it was like oh what (laughs) like when are you coming back and answering that now but yeah like there were such interesting weird standalone stories um the thing the one with the figures you know what i'm talking about like you uh with the boy who's a ghost he has a sheet over his head yeah Yeah. and it was like figure one figure two so it looked like it was from like a manual or or like something like that i'm being a ghost or whatever yeah i remember i started that one and there were like these little paragraphs yeah so they're like all of that um on the opposite page of the white one is like stuff you have to read and there's so much of it. So I got to that point, I was like, oh, this feels like a chore. But then I got really into it, (laughs) right? So when you actually like dive into that story, it starts as like an instructional manual and then it keeps going from there. Uh, And that was fascinating the way that was told. It was so unique. I've never seen something done like that. No, me either. That's what I thought. This is book five and I completely agree with you that um, they followed this kid through his uh, life and have the little, let's see if we can see it, he have the steps to his life and talk, uh, I can't let's see if I can get, there you see it. Step five, the blah, 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 parking lot, blah, blah, blah. So you see that each little panel has that and it takes him up to uh, his old age and everything uh, that's done there. Um, that was remark. That was a remarkable bit of storytelling. Yeah. Oh, I got to the end and I was like, oh man, this like, this hurt me a little, <laughs> you know, which I didn't expect from like this creepy anthology we decided to talk about, you know? Yeah. So that was very nicely done. That, that, that probably um, had the only ending that was reasonably hopeful to me. I yeah, a hundred percent with you. Yeah, there are some that were brutal, <laughs> and it was yeah. like, oh, this. Is- <laughs> yeah, this is a brute. This can be a brutal read, raw and and um, raw and. Um, stomach churning but it's mostly psychological horror um and it's deeply philosophical i mean if you start with book one and go through book five uh, this uh, guy's well i guess it's a guy w maxwell i don't know any women named maxwell but it's possible um this person's philosophy on living and stuff um bleeds through and informs the whole uh, book, and I, I meant to highlight, first of all, it starts out with one of the creepiest stories ever. Oh, yeah. With Ugh. a spider. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I hate spiders. <laughs> oh, God. I was like, oh, no, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, the spider story, that was some genuine creepiness Ugh. going on in that. Um, but everyone is suffering. There's a flavor for everyone suffering, and make no mistake, everyone is suffering. And then there was a quote about being um, eaten from inside by your, by there's, bu- everybody's got bugs. Oh, gosh, then, yeah. 
uh, we're all being devoured by bugs. Slowly but surely, our little our little internal insects, boredom, lonely, loneliness, regret, etc., are eating us whole, nibbling away from the inside out. The process only lasts for as long as you're alive. Um, I thought that just right there. That's just in the first issue. To me, I was like, whoa, this is going to be some great writing. And the whole, all three, uh, I'm sorry, all five books, to me, I read them all uh, at once, which um, I found to be the most enjoyable way to do it because it kept the string um, fresh in my mind because there is like that overarching uh, thing that connects everything. Um, but just the writing and all of these, I think is remarkable. I didn't, I, I, I agree with you that some were stronger than others, but at the very least, they all, um, I thought were really interesting and cool. And there, yeah. was, there was one, let me see if I can find it. The, and it's all about this ice cream man who, so, sort of, so, I guess he sells ice cream, but it's like he sells nightmares. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, and he's kind of controlling people. You get to learn more and more about him. Um, the story that's popping out in my head, I think you just showed a part of it, but that guy who was that the songwriter, the guy who had the hit song. Yeah, when he was the one younger. Yeah, it was, and he could never uh, get a second song out of him. He just never had that second hit. And he starts off and he's in a diner just like drinking coffee and upset with his life. And there's like these two kids like, oh, wait, is that him? That's him. Like looking up his picture when he was young. And uh, yeah, and that turns into just a trippy nightmare. <laughs> like, yeah. But that was all that was there. These characters were like, don't get too attached to them because they're not going to stick around. But <laughs> you, can, you, you at least are interested in their lives and what's happening and and then yeah the ice cream man appears and makes everything chaotic and crazy and changes yeah. everything i think loneliness and death seem to be kind of the main themes in this there's yeah. an awful lot of people alone or who end up alone this uh, this annoyed me along with the deadpool story that did it where it's all in spanish at oh. least we had a translation in the back Whereas with yeah. Deadpool, I had to look up the translation and, on Google, and that was a real pain. But I gotta um, tell you, yeah, with that one, I never even looked up the translation because I was reading on Hoopla, and to flip to the oh. page and try to go, I was like, I'm not even doing it. I'm just skipping to the English because I, I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. So I just used context clues and tried to figure it out. But yeah, that was kind of a bummer. Like, But yeah, digitally, that was hard. If I was holding the book, that'd be way easier. That is a good point. Um, let's see, there was the, the um, oh, I love this story where the guy is trapped in the television. Oh, yeah. Tonight on a very special episode of Ice Cream Man TV story, this guy gets trapped in a television where they are uh, satires of uh, like Bachelorette, um, except that they're all mannequins and don't have faces. He's the only human among them. Yeah, that was that was really eerie. <laughs> Very eerie. And then he gets taken into family autopsy, where he uh, he has to figure out in half an hour what killed his uncle Bob. And he's like, Uncle Bob, what? Why are you here? And it's his real uncle Bob. And then. <laughs> chopped where they have to put together a human given the remains that they're uh, given on the uh, in a basket and then the uh, the card uh, America's got intestines <laughs> and then he travels over to um, wealthy family of zombies which is you know a satire on the Kardashians <laughs> That one is pretty great. I I thought that was really good, and um, there there wasn't anything. You know, it's not like it's going to keep me up at night, but I just thought it was really um, disturbing enough 
that and really clever enough that it's going to stick with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm actually, I read this like a week or so ago and I'm remembering more than I thought I would because there were such uniquely told stories and characters and the way it was put together. I think this is great for like fans of, if you're into like a twilight zone kind of show, except more creepy and weird and upsetting. <laughs> It's yeah. definitely not an upper, uh, <laughs> but that's not, you know, you know, that was an anthology kind of show. Um, I can see people who are interested in that, like enjoying something like this. My favorite story was uh, the Neapolitan one, Strange Neapolitan, um, where the kid got, or the, yeah, I guess he's probably a teenager. He got three flavors. Oh, yeah. And, and it went through. Th yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I was no. just remembering, like, oh, yeah, that one. He, he got, his life goes off in three different directions with the three flavors. I thought this was so interesting and well done and well conceived. In the one place he travels, he meets a woman, uh, gets married, and things happen. In the second flavor, area he travels he finds a lost dog and in the third yeah. um, <laughs> he's uh, <laughs> the ice cream cone turns buggy and he's murdered by somebody um but i i thought it was really inventive i love the color hues here um and i, I thought it was just very inventive and i'm glad everything I'm going to spoil it because I was really worried. I'm glad everything worked out with the dog. Oh, gosh. Because Those are spoilers really I want to tell everyone always. <laughs> yeah. We should talk about this. Because, yeah, I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh, if this dog dies, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> like, yeah. No, because it's a very cute dog. And they develop a great relationship. And, you know, one thing, there's no, uh, the artist did such a good job because there's no words, really going on in any of this to describe anything of what happened. It's just illustrations. And um, you follow it along fine. And I think that's um, that's a really well told story uh, by a good team when you don't have to have words. Um, he's just been given instructions on, on how to lay it out. That was by far my favorite story was Strange Neapolitan, which is what I yeah. want to call my band when I put my <laughs> band together. And then and uh, your record has to be a Neapolitan color. Right. Uh, that'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, I think that was my favorite, too. I forgot about that one. That one was so good. This and yet, yeah, what a well-told story when you don't really need dialogue. <laughs> you don't have to tell people what's happening. Yeah, and he addresses that in the back. Um maddening recipes here with select script pages from chapter six strange neapolitan to give you a sense of how the issues came together and so this is um this is like how he sent it to the artist how he wanted it told um and so that's how the artist had to follow it and then there's another one that you can read uh backwards or for or mm. forwards you can read it regular or you can start at the back and read it that way i thought that was an interesting way to tell the story uh i read that a couple of times i didn't read it backwards to forwards i just read it forwards twice or mm -hmm. or i don't even know what i'm saying <laughs> I, I didn't read it backwards at all i just read it normal style twice and i thought it was really interesting that was the palindrome story um, where everything's a, like a oh, no no no, that's not the palindrome story, is it? Um, no, I think that was a different one. Yeah, no, palindrome yeah. story is different. This one just worked either way. Uh, what was nice is like you don't really have to go back and read it the other way because they kind of flipped it in the middle. Right. And you kind of experienced it back to forwards again, and it was fascinating how it worked either way. Like I feel like that's a lot of effort on a brain because <laughs> I, I was thinking about that. I was like, man. To actually figure that out and like t do it within the time. I don't know. Even just trying to think about it hurt my brain. So I was like, wow, that was really well done. Oh, here's palindrome. Oh, yeah. Comic can be read backwards and forwards. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, because that's the definition. That makes issue, sense. It's in issue four. Um, I, just the art is so great in this. 
um, and it's really um, very inventive writing. I just dug it. All all five volumes, and but make no mistake, there's a lot of disturbing imagery. To me, there's yeah. a lot of. Uh, it, it's one of those books <laughs> that I like because it sticks with me. Um, the same reason I, uh, I, I would like a good horror movie that sticks with me. Um, so I, I don't know how you feel. Um, actually, I don't know how you feel about uh, horror in general. Um, so I don't know. Is this is this something that you would say you enjoyed or tolerated or <laughs> would, um, are looking forward to getting the hardcover of? Well, you know, I love Ito, so I, I'm definitely That's a right. horror fan of of comics, but specifically psychological horror is where I like to go more than anything. Um, and this was it. I, I will say, it's like I said at the beginning, it is an anthology, so there were certain issues I liked more than others. Um, so I can't say it like blew me away because of that reason. But it was so interesting and well done. It's something I'll continue to read on Hoopla. So the next volume, I'll totally pick that up. Uh, if there's ever like a fancy Neapolitan hardcover or something, I could consider that. That would be neat. Um, but but yeah, I think it's worth your time, especially if you have a way like Hoopla or like your library, you can support them and read it. Um, if you want to support Image, though, get all the trades. That's cool. But it's it's something it's definitely something I've never read anything like this, and you can't say that a lot anymore, right? We've both read a lot of comics, yeah. and it it was just so uniquely done, and I have to give it credit for that. Like, yeah. and there were so many stories like we're talking about it now, and I really didn't realize I would it would stay in my head like that, like the figure one and like uh, the Neapolitan one, like more sticking with me than I thought it would. So that. That's definitely, you know, I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. Okay, good. Well, there are a lot of creepy bugs and body yeah. parts and skinless people. Spiders. Yeah. There's a lot <laughs> of creepy crawlies in this thing. Yeah, if you have any fears about anything like that, you're going to experience it. <laughs> yeah. So watch out. Yeah. And a lot of terrible things happen, and there's a lot of gross stuff. But if you don't care about that, then check it out. And I... Oh, um, where was the issue five where they had the, the little kid's story uh, that you were talking about? Because I, I, I actually got a kick out of this because I, these are the stories I read to my daughter. Yeah, the, like the giving tree one. was That yeah. was like my favorite book girl. And I was like, oh, this is, <laughs> yeah, and, this is and, crazy. And, yeah, and Good Night You, my, I read Good Night Moon with my daughter when she was like two, probably every night for three years or something. And he calls it good night you and it goes it is really oh, yeah. uh, just creepy. Those yeah. pictures on the wall. <laughs> yeah. A girl heating up a spoon, some you know, junkie heating up a spoon in this room. And then it has the giving tree, only it's called the loving tree. That one, like, didn't he immediately, uh, like, I don't know, like, uh, chop down the tree or something, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it was pretty fast. <laughs> Where he's like, okay. <laughs> oh, you heard of that. Okay, that's right. <laughs> he's like, yeah, okay, bye. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, will you smoke li weed laced with Coke? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Dr. Seuss that one was crazy, but it was also like, oh, this is about as crazy as a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> so, yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, I I got a huge kick out of this. I mean, it was it was creepy because Ice Cream Man moved in, took over as the father, and was telling him these horrible stories at night. Uh, and what he did to the mom. Yeah, that that was pretty horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. It it was um yeah. I don't know if it comes out in a big enough format. I I can see myself upgrading, but I definitely want to keep following it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I really, really, I th I think I liked it more than you. It sounds like, but um, which is fine. We we don't always uh, like the exact same thing. Which segue? How are you doing with American Vampire? <laughs> so I'm in, I'm still in the middle of volume two, I think. Oh, okay. 
yeah, I'm, I'm not that far into it. Uh, yeah, I was telling Jess, I was like, I, I don't know. The first volume didn't get me like I thought it would. It was just, and maybe it was because it was a lot of origin story, right? So there's a lot of exposition and we're learning a lot. And I just don't care right now. <laughs> I, like, I'm just like, oh, okay, that guy's an old vampire and he's different. Okay, so what now? So I don't know. I'm going to read it all. We're reading it for fangirls. Uh, but oh, good. yeah. So I'm, I'm going to give it a real shot. Okay, good. Because I think it gets better as he works um, uh, Skinner Sweet into um, the time periods, the different time periods mm -hmm. working its way up to modern times. I think that's the, the neatest part of it and the neatest twist, how he um, works the vampires uh, into that so i mean that that's the part that grabbed me i can't remember not being revved up by the, the first book but i i feel like i read it so long ago i'm gonna have to read it again to to really grasp what's going on i have not read volume eight yet so i've read everything up till seven um but yeah i i hope you enjoy it because i i really did yeah, I guess I just expected more from volume one because of the Stephen King element and like, I don't know, but it was a ton of origin and that was the entire volume. So yeah. maybe I've got to, I've got to care more once it actually progresses. Uh, and I like vampires, so I'm like, yeah. this is something I enjoy. I'm giving yeah. it a shot. Okay. Well, that's all we can ask. Um, and then bucket full of heads. <laughs> as I renamed it, and uh, Felix corrected me. It's Basket Full of Heads by Joe Hill, speaking of Stephen King, it's his son. And this, I like, it's got a really thin, oh. kind of thin paper. Oh, is um, that the like, wider format too? Or is it regular? Uh, it's black it's, label, right? It's black label, but I don't know that it's wider. It, okay. it looks standard to me. Okay. But it's got that really cool, um, Textury, like thin, C3. Yeah, exactly, cool. yeah. It's very nice. That's the, and so then once you take the dust jacket off, it's got a nice um, cover that you can see if you can oh, see. Oh, the axe. I was like, what's happening on this the, image? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's cool. With the axe. Um, and I have been looking forward to reading this book and a lot of these, um, what is it going to be? Hill House comics. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I was really looking forward to this book. Yeah, me too. I was glad when you recommended it. So what did you think of it? So let's talk about the story, I guess. Um, sure. I'll, why, the... don't you, why don't you talk and I'll show some art. Okay, was that the 70s? Is that when it was? Well, I didn't even pick <laughs> was up it set, on... set somewhere? I didn't even pick up on... It just says Brody Island, Maine. Oh, 1983. Okay, okay. Hey, I was close. Yeah, no, I, I <laughs> yes. totally flaked and, and thought it was current. Um, I oh. think Brody was Did the you? name of the sheriff in Jaws. I, I thought it was blatantly not current, like the way the cops acted and the right. clothing. Yeah. Um, and the hair and stuff. Yeah, the hair. Definitely the hair. Okay, so we, uh, in the story, we follow this girl who's dating a cop. That's the cop right there. They're together. Uh, he's a younger guy. He's a cop for like, I think he just joined for the summer or something. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And so he's real, you know... He's real cool. He's good looking. He's dealing with the older cops who have always been there. Um, and they're, I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> try to talk about it without spoiling it. Cause I just yeah. immediately have reactions to that now, to what you're showing after the whole thing. But um, a lot of crazy stuff ends up happening. And the girl grabs an ax off of a wall, chops off a guy's head and the head is still like alive and talking. She ends up putting it in a basket and she has a basket full of heads. That's really all I can say, right? Like, <laughs> so there's a magical axe 
and she starts chopping heads because she has to to save her life and it gets crazy from there yeah and yeah, the heads stay alive. alive yeah so they talk to her the whole time and she does have them in a basket uh it's a very very straightforward title but it worked very well <laughs> So I think the craziness it went to, um, the interesting layers of the stories and the characters, I loved that. I loved that. I thought it was very well done. Uh, it was such. It was very silly and ridiculous and over the top. And that was the point. I'm sure that was the point. And I very much enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I I agree. I hear, I hear that. that. Oh. Um, I agree with everything you said, and I love the story, um, how how twisty and turny the story got. That was a really, I think, well-written part um, where we were trying to figure out exactly what it was the bad guys were looking for. How many people were the bad guys? Were there any good guys? And I like how she, she seemed to go from uh, kind of... Uh, like a, a overly hormonal teenager to strong female protagonist really quickly. Um, yeah, it's like it's like she had to once her life was on the line. You yeah. know, you saw a totally different side of her that wasn't so uh, surface level, which was very well done, I think. And and yeah, there's a very uh, there's a very much like a whodunit throughout the whole thing, and you're trying to figure that out. And that that was maybe my favorite part about it. I thought that was just like really well done. Shows how he is as a writer. Um, and yeah, yeah it was su super campy. So if you're into that like campy, over the top, silly, I mean, these heads are talking <laughs> the whole time. Yeah. And she literally does have a basket full of heads. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was ridiculous, and I very much enjoyed it. Um, and I agree that. Um, the um, the um, the clue um, wait, what'd you call it? Who done it? It's a, yeah. a who done it that I thought was really well done with a bunch of silly elements uh, thrown into it. But I I loved it, and I'm really looking forward to um, the other entries into uh, Hill Hill House comics. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't I don't know what they are yet. I don't I don't know if they're out. This was the first one that was put out, um, but I thought it was great. So, well, that's that's what we have for review. It actually went pretty quickly. Is there anything, anybody in the audience, do you have any uh, questions, suggestions, uh, names for bands like, uh, like Strange uh, Neapolitan that you... Uh, you want to suggest to us or that, um, that is a great name <laughs> it really is <laughs> the more you say it i'm like yeah you need to start that band um <laughs> uh, well there's deviant fun hey deviant fun how's it going oh no did you see what lloyd wong said i hate it <laughs> yeah Ugh. the history of early vellum it sounds pretty awful <sighs> so it's a vellum like material I don't see how it could be real Bella. Yeah. Well, it's it at least nice looking. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so uh, we are not getting any questions or anything. So, which um, it's funny. Sometimes we get so many questions, we never get to the topic. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, how would you like to plug whatever you'd like to plug? Yeah, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the Comic Slayer on YouTube, that's my channel. Reed and I should be putting up some stuff on there again soon. Um, we may dive deeper into his book if you're interested mm -hmm. in something like that. Um, yeah, also check out his book. Yeah, that's a plug. I'm going to plug it again. <laughs> it is called Rock and Roll Terrorist, The Graphic Life of Gigi Allen. Oh, of Shock Rocker Gigi Allen. I was like, there's something else there. Yeah, Iggy Pop liked it. You could check it out from Microcosm Publishing. Uh, it's officially out next week, but if you order now, you can still, like, they'll ship it now. And it's a good time. It's crazy. It's a good time. But it's like this show, right? If you like weird, crazy books, here's one for you. <laughs> like, you yeah, know. and that one's real life. 
Yeah. Um, Hayden has a question for you. Oh. <laughs> uh oh. No. No, what happened was I bought it uh, to read. I've never seen the movie. I only know that there's Pennywise. That's all I got. I, I've never seen any of the you know movies that come out. I've never read the book. So it's like, oh, I'll read the book. It's huge. I'll check this out, right? So the moment I like showed it on a show, Hayden was like, or Hayden and Maddie were both like, oh, there's some there's some awkward stuff in that. I was like, oh, no. So now I don't know if I want to read it. <laughs> you guys made me very much question that. So we'll see. I've never read it, so I don't know. Um, let's see. Well, Joe Chip, I am going, I ordered it and I'm going to read it because Lady Mechanica is my, uh, one of my favorite characters. I don't, I don't know how, if Kristen's read any Lady Mechanica or how she feels about her. I haven't, but I would like to, uh, you made me want to actually, and I believe it's on Hoopla. So Ooh. we could do I, that. I'd be happy to do that. I don't, there's another thing. I don't know why I buy those, um, trades <laughs> because every, it's like, he's now he's cranking out the hard covers yeah and, and the art is fantastic and the story's great so i um uh, i gotta stop buying those soft covers it's ridiculous <laughs> um it's basket full of heads one mile you men done yes which is great yeah no commitment um what's on your halloween watch list anything of note um, where's my phone? Yeah, I have, uh, it on my notes. Okay. There's a movie called the owners, which I think just came out. Um, but I, I mean, it came out to theaters, but are they going to be, I don't know if they're going to release it in theaters or if this is going straight to pay-per-view or what, but it's called the owners and it sounded, uh, good and scary to me and then i want to see uh happy death day which was written by scott labdell but i'm not holding it against the movie because it's <laughs> apparently really good and the the trailers for it look really good um so i want to see that i can't think of um of anything else that i um have teed up i have so much reading to do um yeah, that's what I'm doing more than anything. But uh, have you seen the trailer for Freaky with Vince Vaughn? No. I totally want to see it. It looks so goofy. It is a take on Freaky Friday. But uh, Vince Vaughn is a serial killer. And he accidentally swaps places with the uh, teenage high school girl he's trying to kill. <laughs> and then she has to, like, uh, in his serial killer body, has to try to swap back within a certain amount of time or she's stuck in it or whatever. But the trailer, I mean, I thought it looked really fun and ridiculous and over, over the top and funny, right? It's kind of like the books we read. <laughs> but, yeah, I think it looks fun. So I want to see that. Oh, that's, I haven't heard of that. Um, Streakazoid brings up Haunting of Ill House. I have to see that. Um, yeah, I would like to see that, too. I, I really need to see that. And that's, that comes from everybody saying that I really mm -hmm. need to see it. Uh, Jess, are you starting a GoFundMe to buy the life size Harley bust? They announced at NYCC. Uh, no, I'm happy with just statues. I, uh, if I had the room and the money, I'd buy that life size Harley statue. That'd be funny to have, <laughs> but I don't, uh, I'm not going to get a bust. And uh, that's, I, I don't even know how much it is, but it's way too much for me, probably. I'd say too much, yeah. Yeah. Um, here's Endman40 with a good question. Are you guys looking forward to any books coming out in 2021? Personally, there aren't too many books that have been solicited for 2021. So far that I'm interested in, there are some, but not many. Um, that's a good question. I just did a Marvel solicitation show with Omar yesterday. Or was it Thursday? I think it was yesterday. Uh, yeah, it was yesterday. And a lot of books that he was talking about were getting released next year. Um, and I'm trying to think of what some of the most memorable ones were. Oh, I'm going to pick up the New Mutants Omnibus oh, next yeah. year. I'm excited for that. Um, 
the Boom Buffy series is getting a, an oversized hardcover. I'm very much looking forward to that because I was like, I was trade waiting or I was waiting past the trades. I didn't want to get the trades because I'm like, they're going to do this and then they're doing it. So I'm excited. I was right. Um, <laughs> Good. And hopefully there will be more Lumberjanes hardcovers next year. Ah, yes. And because it's ending, I think that'll definitely happen. Um, so yeah, New Warriors. I'm not New Warriors. New Mutants is uh, a series that I lost along with Peter David's Hulk in the flood, and mm. I really wanted to read it. And everybody said, "Don't do that. They're going to come out with Epics or an Omni." And so I've been dying to get my hands on the New Mutants Omni. Yeah, that's a big yeah. one. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, well, maybe it's a it? maybe yeah. it'll get pushed into. Um, uh, yeah, Hulk is getting. That's right. Peter David's Hulk number three is getting pushed into, uh, not pushed, but is getting released next year. Um, Uh, Jess, have you read The Long Halloween? Uh, I don't read it every year, but I have read it a couple times. I do like it. And you know that I'm not a big fan of Tim Sale. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I see you're going to pick up Blade of the Immortal because it reads N.A. way, Jess. You should Are try you? it. I did. Yeah, I did pick it oh, up. Oh, nice. Western style. Hey, let's read it together because I also picked it up. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Um, you should try Levius. That reads what's the N A? Oh, North American style. Mm, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a cyberpunk style manga. Mm, I like cyberpunk. Um, I've been wanting to read that too. Uh, yeah. It okay. Good. good. Yeah. Let's read Blade of the Immortal. And yeah. well, the only thing that got me was that it's ten volumes. But uh, yeah, I'll read volume one and then we'll worry about that later. Kazar is coming out. Kazar. Uh, I think that could be fun next year. Uh, you know, criminal criminal reprints. Uh, Kirby, now, this appeals to me. Kirby mm -hmm. Romance Omni from the like the forties or fifties. Uh, that'll be fun. I think I think that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. That's the kind of stuff that I'm a sucker for. Is that that kind of old style comic? Um, Criminal reprints are volume one and two are next year. Um, Omnidog, did you purchase read the Morbius Omnibus? I did purchase it. I haven't. I I read that as a young man, like as a teenager. So I'm looking forward to rereading um, Morbius again. Uh, I he's. I don't know that people. It's, people seem to be sort of lukewarm about him but i really like him as a character and so i don't i, I that may only be me that likes him oh. you and my dad oh your dad my dad oh, loves him yeah right on man um dad this oh is, yeah. yeah that's the one this is the one that's the one yeah you're right the most exciting one 100 percent agree i cannot wait to get that we should also we should reread that together and talk about it. Oh, absolutely a great yeah, idea. 100%. I'm excited. Okay, good. Um, the World of Black Hammer Volume 2 is coming out next year. Okay, I am not buying, that is something I am not buying any more trades. Yeah, anymore. you can't. You can't. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Because those are really nice library editions, too. They are. Very nice. Uh, let's see, and man 40s choices. Uh, Uncanny X Men 4, yeah. Peter David Hulk 3, yeah. Flashpoint Omni, I have it all custom bound. Batgirl Omnibus, Omnibus um, that's the Gail Simone one, I think. So uh, I want that too. Yeah, I'm tempted by that. Um, so far, only a Black Panther epic. Dazzler and Iron Man Marvel Masterwork. Brubaker Cap 1, mm -hmm. I'll be reprint as well. I'll and probably get that too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've uh, never read that run, I and I know either. it's I know it's great. So, and I like that new DM cover. It's really nice. Yeah, um, I need to read that Brubaker run too. Uh, 
soon. Like, gosh, it's already October. I felt like I was going to start it in September, and I, we're already in the middle of October. I feel like the summer, like, time froze. And then September just went by. Yeah. I don't think it's just me, but I was just like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. Um, Captain America, oh, have they ever announced who's taking over Superman? Oh me, I'm gonna I'm gonna be riding Superman. Uh, it's gonna be really great. Awesome. He's gonna have a cape and <laughs> he's gonna, you know, Where's not have many weaknesses. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cat America by Brew Bigger is getting reprint. Just you need to read it before first before it gets reprinted. You're right. I need to read it so I can feel good that I have the books and nobody else does. <laughs> oh, you already have them all. Okay, that makes sense. I, I do have them. Yeah. You hoarded all of them and then didn't read I, I, one of them. <laughs> right, I haven't read a single one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, my take on NYX and X23, X20, my opinion is X23 is awesome. And I liked Nyx, 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 whatever it is, but not. I don't think a lot of people did. I'm not really sure about that. Um, I thought it was good enough that I have it and will keep it. Um, but the X-23 series is great. Uh, is the Roger Stern Spidey reprint worth the hype? Uh, yes, in my opinion. Do you have an opinion on Spider-Man at all? Uh, I do have that Omni behind me. And I oh. have not read it. But I oh. have read... Um, it doesn't this have the... Um, the kid who loves Spider-Man issue, yeah. yeah, and that's so good. So, if that's yeah. any telling of how it is, it's great. Uh, I heard Mark Wade wants to write Superman really bad. I, I would read that in a heartbeat. Mark Wade is great superhero um, at superheroes. I heard a number of DC Omnis are getting pushed back, including <laughs> including the Batwoman Omni again. You're kidding. That's already been pushed back like a year into March. I'm not excited about that. Uh, oh well. I have 400 other books I need to read anyway. Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they've already solicited World of Black Hammer Volume 3 for June 2021. Hmm. Yeah, I missed out on the Volume 2 IST Gone in a Second one, so hopefully that'll come back soon. I assume they're all evergreen, because they surely sell the crap out of them. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, a, it's kind of a maddening time we're living in now. I don't want to complain when there are people dying and out of jobs about the mm -hmm. fact that I can't get my hands on a book. Um, but it is a different time that, that we're living in right now. It's definitely weird. Yeah. There's a lot of panic. I'm not panicking about it. I, I think that one's coming back. So. Yeah. Uh, this is a good question for you. My feels are I'm very excited. Very excited. And Noelle Stevenson, she's the showrunner on it. She's the Lumberjanes creator. So it's going to be amazing. There's no doubt about that. And I did a whole video on Lumberjanes. I liked it so much, so I'm I'm happy going to be happy to watch it. Except I don't have HBO Max or HBO anything. I don't either, yeah. but I'm going to get it just for that. <laughs> okay. That, that's the thing that will push me over the board. Yep. Uh, I do. It's not oversized, and I wanted it's it's uh, a bunch of issues put together, Eric, uh, and it includes ads. I know a lot of people that do custom bound books like the ads. I actually don't. So I'd like an oversized Batwoman um, that didn't have ads. So I'm, and I'm not, I don't have any emotional attachment to this particular Omni like I do maybe my Flashpoint Omnis. As much as I love Batwoman, I would, I'd throw my custom bound to the wind to get a, an official one. Just times are hard. I think you should hire me as a butler. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Are you ordering Terry Moore's ever this week? Oh, right. Terry, yeah. What, um, do you, I can't remember what, what's going on with this now. Do it's you, coming out in a hardcover and it's this week. Apparently I think it's like Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember. Uh, I, yeah, that's something I want. I'm a big Terry Moore fan. I'll have to I believe it's a, it's a small one, but it's still probably something I have to get to because I want all the hardcovers. I still have this thing in the... I haven't even opened this thing. <laughs> oh, right. I don't... Is that five years later? Yeah. Yeah, no, I haven't opened it yet either. Yeah. Here's a question for you. No. No, but I'll check that out. That sounds good. I haven't seen any of that, the con panels for like any cons. <laughs> like, I heard they're doing NYCC stuff. I'll definitely check that out. <laughs> it's actually coffee Duck because hat. I got off work at 7 a.m. <laughs> and I'm trying to wake up. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, I think it's getting close to dinner time for me. And I, I don't know, is it breakfast time for you? Kristen? <laughs> Kristen, Kristen? Uh, I, I came home and I ate breakfast. So I haven't ate since then. I probably should eat. Okay. And now I have to get back to a normal schedule. So, uh, holy smoke. I, I know it's gonna be hard. Um, so fangirls assemble tomorrow. Yes. Uh, oh, what is tomorrow? We're talking about the new Junji Ito book which I always forget the name of Venus in the blind spot. I think it's not around me. I'm like looking uh, that book. And then another manga that I never remember the name of, and I hated it. So that's a spoiler. Uh, it'll be fun for you to hear me rant about that one, but I loved Ito. So <laughs> check nice. us out then. And like I said before, if you want to check out the comic slayer uh, right now, Reed and I have two videos up where we talk about nonsense. <laughs> no, we, we haul <laughs> some stuff in one of them. And then we uh, talk about what we've read in another one. So if you're into that, Reed's pretty cool. Check him out. Ah, they are the cool couple of comics. Oh, right thanks. There you go. And uh, Omnidog's Vault, I will have up uh, a new video on um, Ultimate Spider-Man read-through. Uh, I'll put that up uh, tomorrow. And Omni Bros Live is at noon tomorrow. And uh, I think maybe I'm going to do a video on uh wait i had an idea and now i forgot it oh well i did one on fantasy and then i was going to do one on i had all the books lined up what other genres are there fantasy crime not superhero <laughs> not westerns oh well i'll think <laughs> i had all these books and i'm like i need to do um uh oh I, Sci I think sci science fiction yeah there we go okay yeah That'll be fun. Um, yes, we're doing a Sunday show, Sunday show tomorrow at noon. And thank you for reminding me, to Collector. I <laughs> have to keep up with Invincible. Uh, thank you, Bobby Keating. Everybody, please hit that like button. Yes, the face, uh, Facebook, the YouTube algorithm. Uh, the more you hit the likes, the more likes I get. The more I'm up at the top of the search when people search for certain topics so that's why we need to get that uh going but yeah i was going to do a science fiction um video but i may do maybe i should do vertigo video some vertigo books do an anthology video i have to do volume i have to do version two or episode two of my fantasy video European sexy books. Uh, I don't know that I have any of those. Very specific genre. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, of course, to uh, my fabulous co-host, Omnicat, and thank you to the chat for um, all the good uh, questions and hanging in there and, and uh, listening to us. And uh, we, I appreciate, and we appreciate everybody that watches the show. Those of you who are watching afterwards, feel free to um, subscribe or leave a comment. 
Uh, we always respond to comments. And peace and love. Peace and love. Thank you. Thanks, all.